If I was going to describe Ed in one word, I would say integrity. He was very highly regarded, is very highly regarded. Civility is what he contributed, good-natured civility. An exceptional and outstanding statesman. Bravo, Ed. Felicitations. Cornwall, Ontario. It was here, on the shores of the St. Lawrence River, that local businessman Ed Lumley decided in 1972 to switch careers and run for mayor of this hardworking town. Voters liked what they saw, and after a couple of successful years at City Hall, Ed's talents began to attract the attention of the federal liberals. Soon John Turner came knocking, eventually convincing him to become a federal candidate for the Liberal Party. I was in, in, in the Ontario riding of Ottawa Carlton at the time. I was a member of Parliament. I'd been in the government. I got to know Cornwall very well over the years, and uh, there was Ed, uh, the mayor of Cornwall. And uh, I thought, this is the kind of personality we need in public life. And so it was that while most Canadians took time off to enjoy the summer of 1974, Ed hit the streets trying to make a name for himself with voters in the scenic eastern Ontario riding of Stormont Dundas. I applied for a summer job with Coke. I'm a teenager, a summer job, and Ed Lumley applies as well. I get a job as a held helper. Guess who gets the job as the driver? So I spend a whole summer, all right, lugging these Coke cases up and downstairs while Ed Lumley was in there charming the owner of the store. And I, he's never let me forget it. The only thing that I can say is at the end of that summer, I had muscles like you cannot believe. And Ed Lumley's body, well, everybody's seen it. And that, as a result of that, I think I've become a very good golfer, certainly better than Ed Lumley. His hard work paid off. On July 8th, Ed was elected Liberal Member of Parliament for Stormont Dundas as part of Pierre Trudeau's majority government. I knew that he might make a good member of the provincial house, so I went to see him about becoming a candidate. And he decided not to. I mean, I was very upset. No, I wasn't upset, but I was a little disappointed. And of course, it became worse when he decided uh, to join that other party whose name escapes me. Ed's ascent was rapid, and in his first term, he was appointed as parliamentary secretary to then Minister of Finance, Jean Chrétien. It was hard work, and uh, it was in a very difficult period, and uh, we had to uh, you remember in those days, uh, I was called Dr. No, because uh, the government was tempted to spend a bit too much. And uh, Ed was with me, uh, uh, convincing the members that uh, we had to stop spending that much. In May 1979, the Progressive Conservative Party and their young leader, Joe Clark, won a minority government. But the voters of Stormont Dundas stood by their incumbent, and Ed was re-elected. He didn't come at things theoretically. He uh, was a person who'd served in local government, uh, dealing with very direct, nitty-gritty issues, and he always retained his ability to do that. That isn't to say that he wasn't interested in the larger issues. He was a quite effective minister. He was approachable. He was open. Uh, even in the most bitter of uh, parliamentary debates, and we had some of those, uh, he was one of the people who was uh, a bridge back to reason and back to uh, the common purposes we all had there. Uh, I think, and I don't think that was show, I think that's very much in the, uh, in the nature of the person. Liberals returned to power in 1980 with their hands full dealing with Quebec separatism and patriation of the Constitution. Ed was awarded the industry trade and commerce portfolio, quickly tackling looming trade issues with Japan and its burgeoning auto industry. Any Canadian who's got a job in the Japanese auto industry these days owes him some thanks because he really put the hammer on the Japanese and said, you want to sell cars in Canada? You know, uh, we, we want you to start making some here and employing some Canadians. Uh, we're, and and he, changed, he was ready, threatening to change the law to make it a lot more difficult if they didn't go along with it. They caved in and we have what we have today. Canada was involved in international trade before, but he opened the doors for international trade for Canada. In, in, no matter where in the world he went, he made sure that he knew that Canada was interested and open to international trade. Ed would go on to serve as Minister of International Trade and Minister of Communication, but the winds of political change were blowing through Canada, and his days as a parliamentarian would come to an end as Brian Mulroney and the Progressive Conservative Party swept to power on September 4th, 1984. He had an understanding of Canada and, and um, 
You represented the, the tolerance that you need to be a senior player and the vision. He had a great vision of the country. He understood the country, understood its history and its people. Um, I hate to say this because it probably embarrass him, but he is a very kind man in terms of his appreciation of people. He tended to give people the benefit of the doubt, which is why he was such a good friend to so many people. He was loyal and devoted. And uh, that, uh, in some ways, reflects some of the virtues we like to ascribe to Canada itself. An immensely popular MP with over 10 years of service to his country, Ed Lumley can look back on a distinguished career filled with friends and admirers from all corners of the political spectrum. Ed was and is a great Canadian. I mean, he really feels for this country. But more importantly, in some ways, or just as importantly, he's a very sensitive individual, a great feeling for those less fortunate. He is a very dedicated Canadian, a very decent human being. Well, Ed is a very engaging human being. He enjoys people for the right reasons. He contributes. He gives back more than he's taken. And he's the sort of citizen we need in a democratic society. Ed Lumley's one of those rare people who seems to think well of everyone. I don't know that that's true, but uh, I suspect it is. And in any event, uh, it has made him a very effective uh, individual, both uh, in the House of Commons and outside. He was a, a good minister, a very good minister in important portfolios, and uh, he always remained a good friend, and uh, he's done extremely well uh, in the private sector, so I'm very pleased that uh, they are honoring him tonight. Certainly the best thing that he ever did was to marry Patty. Um, and uh, she and Sheila are great friends. Um, I think that, uh, and he is a great friend. He's with you when you're down in the dumps and he's with you when you're on top of the world. Um, he's great fun to be with. He's uh, great fun to argue with. Um, and he's tremendously wonderful to beat at golf. I've known Ed so long, it was when people actually thought he was a lefty. Of course, he was working for Pierre Trudeau, and Trudeau listened to him. Hey, he was trying to keep him in the straight and narrow, I suppose. Today, of course, Ed is slightly left of Donald Trump, but he's a great example of compassionate capitalism, and we love him for it and for his friendship. Family and faith and uh, his love of community, his love of country and uh, he's a man of um, enormous hard work, uh, dedication. I mean, look, look what he's done with his life. This is quite, a, quite an achievement, uh, you know, for, for a, as I say, for a guy from Cornwall, he once reminded me that Cornwall is a hell of a lot bigger than Bay Como, <laughs> but, which it was, and, it, and which it is. But he's done amazingly well, and I'm delighted to be able to uh, join in this tribute to him tonight. Canadian Association of Former Parliamentarians pays tribute to the Honourable Ed Lumley.